there you have the president's uh, legal team using just two hours on this Saturday morning to make the beginning of their case of why the president should not be removed from office. Uh, we have a team of correspondents covering what we've heard today, as well as a panel of experts. Want to bring in Nancy Cordes on Capitol Hill. And uh, Nancy, they said you, the Democrats said we weren't going to bring facts. These are the facts as we see them. Uh, and said, you know, they tried to portray essentially these House managers as disingenuous. Um, Nancy, what did you hear this morning? Well, the central case that I heard the president's defense making today is that the president had other reasons for holding up $400 billion or so of military aid to Ukraine beyond the case that the House impeachment managers were making that he was holding it up because he wanted Ukraine to launch some bogus investigations. <laughs> what the president's defense team is arguing is that the president had two other reasons. One, a concern about burden sharing, a concern that other countries weren't doing Doing their fair share to help Ukraine, and two, that the president had big concerns about corruption in Ukraine, and he didn't want to send American money that way until he had some assurances that the money was going to be spent wisely. The problem with that defense, Nora, is that no one was given that explanation at the time that the money was being held up. And a lot of people were asking, including the top Republican in the Senate who's a member of that jury, Mitch McConnell. He says that he asked both the Secretary of State and the Secretary of Defense why this money was being held up. He was given no explanation. And many of the witnesses in the House impeachment inquiry, including the president's own ambassador to the EU, Gordon Sondland, said that they came to the understanding that this money was not going to flow until the president got the investigations announced that he wanted into Joe Biden. So that is a fundamental discrepancy between the president's defense and what a number of the witnesses have said. Now, what the defense team will argue is that those witnesses didn't have firsthand knowledge, that they didn't speak to the president themselves. Nevertheless, nearly every witness who testified said that this is what they understood based on their conversations with people who were surrounding the president. And how many of uh, the witnesses before the House inquiry suggested that it was not about burden sharing, that it was about a political effort to gain this investigation against the Bidens? Well, off the top of my head, there was Gordon Sondland, who said that he came to understand that this was a quid pro quo. It was Bill Taylor, the top U.S. Uh, diplomat in Ukraine, who said uh, that uh, that this it was crazy to condition U.S. aid on uh, uh, on an investigation like this. You had individuals in the White House, like uh, Alexander Vindman, who was the president's top advisor on Ukraine. You had individuals at the state. Department, like George Kent, who ran a Ukraine policy at the State Department. So you had individuals across the government, Nora, in real time, who all believed, uh, if they didn't right away in July, came to understand as the summer went on that this money was being withheld because the president and his, uh, his personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, who we also know now from contemporaneous texts and emails, was pushing Ukraine leaders very hard to open these investigations. He has, he has said so himself on Fox News and to other conservative outlets. Uh, so uh, the argument now that the withholding of the money had to do with something else entirely is, is a difficult case to make. All right, Nancy Cordes on Capitol Hill, stand by with us. Want to bring in Weijia Zhang at the White House because we also heard uh, from the president's uh, lead White House counsel, Pat Cipollone, who also opened up uh, the remarks today in the presentation by saying that this was an effort by the Democratic Party to overturn the last election, that the president did nothing wrong. And in his words, they are asking you to tear up the ballots. And then he said, instead of reading the transcript from July 25th. 
And Nora, this is going to be a central part of their argument going forward, too. It's ironic because they're pointing the finger at Democrats saying that this is purely political, but certainly they are taking every chance they have, too, to remind voters that they have um, a dog in this hunt. And so you will see them continue to say that, you know, the Democrats just want to overturn the results of the 2016 election and try to interfere in the 2020 election. They have made Made that clear. And, you know, they're really trying to get eyeballs on what happened today. President Trump was really irritated. He called it uh, Death Valley. Uh